Welcome to the Dave Cave. Today I am joined by a special guest. Say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. And today we are talking the sequel to Venom, and that is Let There Be Carnage. For now, this is going to be spoiler free. We're going to get into spoilers, but that's mostly in what I didn't like about this movie. And absolutely, you bet your ass. We are talking about that end credit scene. It was so awesome. Yes. He was. Yes, I know. He was. I, I know. I know. Coming back from the old movie, you have Tom Hardy, you have Michelle Williams, you have the lady who played Mrs. Chen, you have Dan, the kind of fiancé, boyfriendy kind of dude, and of course you have Woody Harrelson bringing Cletus Cassidy again back to the silver screen. And this is a movie that oddly picks up and doesn't really stop. Like, even the slow parts aren't really that slow. Like, this movie was two hours long, and it was getting towards the end of the movie. And I had the thought in the theater, there has to be more than this. Because I have not been sitting here for two hours. There's no way. And then it got to credits, and I was like, oh, okay, like, this is it. And now we're going to wait for the end credits. Yes, I said, and I continue to say, we're going to get there. Are you going to tell them about all the fun me and Eddie have in this movie? Obviously. It's a lot. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, Tom Hardy keeps this movie together, as he does with the first one. The first, I find both of these movies actually very entertaining, and Tom Hardy is the center of that. With whatever I'm about to say later on in the video for my negatives and whatever negatives I would have felt about Venom in the first one, Tom Hardy... I can watch him play Eddie Brock and Venom forever. I gladly, I gladly will watch any of these Venom, Venom movies just to see them together. They are incredibly entertaining. You can tell that Tom Hardy is having just an absolute blast in this role. He loves it. And I know that we have seen things where he has said he absolutely loved this. It's a passion project to do Venom, to be Eddie Brock. And it totally shines through throughout the entire movie. And something I was really glad to see, because re-watching Venom, I noticed this a lot more coming up to this movie. They all look a lot better. Carnage, Venom, they look great. I look so sexy. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Thank you. They look great. The CG is pretty damn seamless. They do it, whatever they did, they figured out what they were doing wrong, and they made it better in this movie. Carnage looks phenomenal he looks amazing everything with venom they made him look better he looks the same but better they like ultra hd'd him up from the first one and with that all of the action is beautiful it's chaotic like it would be you have two symbiotes and from the first one to this one you have chaotic fighting in the first one this one, it's not just chaotic, it's all over the place. Like the fight with Riot and Venom in the first one, that's nothing compared to what you see when Carnage and Venom throw ass at each other. Now, while what I say positive about this movie does not seem to take up a lot of time, what I said are pretty all-encompassing things, but there are, the more I think about this movie, things that bring this movie down if you have any kind of idea about what they put in the movie. But like I said earlier, before we get into what I didn't like about this movie, this is your spoiler warning. We are getting into all the spoilers. You need to leave. Yes. Get out of here. Go. Go see the movie. Come back. And then I'll see how much you agree. Now, the first thing that I didn't like about this movie, it seems small at the time. Like, if you're really paying attention, you're like, okay, this shouldn't be happening. But as the movie goes on, they really lean into this aspect of the story. So it doesn't really make sense how they could overlook it early. In the nightclub scene, where Venom is just people hopping. Because he and Eddie had their fallout. I miss Eddie. I know you do. You really I know wanted you to come back. But it, it got better, didn't it? Yes, it did. Okay. Can I, can... You can continue. Yes, thank you. But Eddie, not Eddie, but Venom is in a nightclub. Nightclubs are loud as hell. Boom, 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 boom. And that's happening in this scene. There's a scene, Venom grabs the microphone and he's talking and he's bitching about Eddie and he's bitching about aliens living together and it's a funny little, oh, hey, you know, 
all the ramifications of aliens living among us, among us, but he's speaking through loudspeakers. He should be in excruciating pain. That whole scene, Venom should have been in just absolute agony the entire time. And the reason that that's such a bad thing is like just five minutes before that, Eddie hit the fire alarm on him. And he ran away. And he scurried. He left the body. And then when Carnage gets out, they hold you the whole and he turns and he blows up the alarm because it hurts. Then there's the whole thing between Carnage and Shriek. And she screams. And he says, if she does that again, I'm going to eat her face off. He tells Cletus, don't let her do that again. That was not cool. And then she does it and he hits her. It's a whole point of contention between the Carnage symbiote and Shriek. And they play into it. They have this whole bell. There's a whole scene where you have Eddie and Carnage, and they're not Eddie and Carnage, Eddie and Cassidy, and they're fighting because their symbiotes are hiding to kind of recoup after this big bell in this church is dinging and messing with them. That was a fun little callback because if you know anything about Venom, at least in the comics, a big church bell like that, and they play this actually in Spider Man 3 is what gets the symbiote off of Peter Parker that then finds Eddie Brock. So that was a fun little callback, but not callback, because they don't handle it in the same way. But that was cool enough. But if you're going to lean into sound being such a big part of the finale of this movie, you kind of got to have it make sense when he's in a nightclub. And while we are on the topic of sound, we are going to talk about Shriek. Oh, she sucked ass. Yes, I know. I know. Carnage felt the same way. She was awesome. No, she wasn't. I love the fact that they brought in a super-powered, Sonic-based character. I don't know a ton of stuff about the whole Carnage backstory. I do know some stuff, and I know there's Maximum Carnage, and I know that there is a symbiote girl named Scream. I think that's kind of what they were maybe trying to go on with Shriek and all that. But you're going to have this character come in that didn't need to be there. Shriek was not necessary to this story in any way, shape, or form. Really, all Shriek did was humanize Carnage. You brought him down to, oh, he's got emotions and he's got love and he's got feelings and, oh, oh, that's so nice. But you didn't need her. All you would have needed to do was have Cassidy break out and start just murdering people. Just have him murder people. And they kind of started that, but that's all they needed to do. The whole point of Carnage is Carnage. That's it. That's his whole angle. He is the MC Marvel whatever of just evil and chaos, and death, and murder. That's what Carnage is, and that's why he's so dangerous in the Marvel Universe. He's their mega-powered Michael Myers. He's just going around, he doesn't give a shit, and he's going to murderize everybody's faces. And we get that. We do get that. That's probably the best stuff we get from Carnage, is the breakout and the reveal. That scene is spectacular i can tell you i'll probably watch that scene four or five times when i get this movie because i am going to get this movie i liked it that much despite all the little errors they have that reveal was awesome and that whole scene where he's just killing people left right and center that's carnage you give him a love interest though and you take away from that you didn't you didn't need any reason for Cassidy to do stuff. You could have had him just anywhere just murdering people. And that's what he should have been. Murder. Slide away. Murder. Slide away. And then Eddie and Venom have to go get him. Like, you easily set up the finale and just have a trail of bodies. Have Carnage go and put bodies on a wall that says come find me Eddie. And then have arrows. Have an arrow every block with a body. I know you can't do this because it would be a hard R movie. But you have it. Just an arrow. 
two arms and a leg that way, two arms and a leg that way, and just direct him to the church. And then you still have the church finale. It makes perfect sense to me. You could still play it off perfectly because Carnage needs to be Carnage. And while we are on the topic of how Carnage should be, this is kind of the last big thing, but it's kind of a little thing that I didn't like about this movie. Venom, I understand, is supposed to be kind of the runt of the symbiotes that came to the planet in the first one. I don't like being called that. I know. You are. No, That's I'm not. fine. You are. It's okay to be small. I'm not. I know you're not, but it's okay. Carnage is supposed to be smaller and leaner than Venom, but stronger than him. That's the kind of counterplay to the fact that he's this big, fast, hulking, awesome, strong dude is then Carnage is smaller, but he is wickedly stronger than him. That's the cool kind of counterplay with his size. But I think that would have been so much cooler if you don't have Venom again being the smaller guy fighting the bigger guy. You have him be big ass Venom. You have him be the big strong one in this fight where you're thinking, okay, he's going to go get him. I understand he has his moment of like, whoa, that was a red one. Fuck that. We need to get out of here. But no, he should go at him and Carnage should be smaller and just wipe the floor with him. Oh, kiss my ass. He's stronger than you. No, he's not. He's stronger than you. I am bigger and stronger. I understand, but he's stronger than you. Get over it. There's two in some serious couples now. And now we're going to talk the end credit scene. I was able to luckily duck this thing after it leaked and anybody who leaked this and was there at the screening after Tom Hardy asked you not to, you're a piece of shit. But here we go. So you have Eddie and Venom, and they're in Mexico or wherever. They're made to look like they are somewhere janky, and they are hiding out. Eddie and Venom are talking, and talking about how, as a race, Venom has been privy to eight, you might say billion, eight million or billion years of hive mind knowledge, which is really fucking cool because they took decades to acknowledge the idea that the symbiotes are a race. They are a lot of them and that they share a hive kind of consciousness. Dig the hell out of that. So while they're laying there, Venom says, if I told you all of it, it would, it would kill you. Like it would just be so much. You'd be just done. But I can show you a little bit. Hmm, the hell is this going to be? So, Eddie braces, and he kind of starts to tense up, and then the room starts shaking. <laughs> and Venom's like, what? This isn't me. What the hell's going on? They don't know what's going on. They're freaking out. And all of a sudden, you see this gold flash in the background. And then all of a sudden, they're in like a resort. And there are two little towel-made-up geese next to them. They're like, what the hell's going on? Boom. J. Jonah Jameson shows up on the TV, breaking news, Spider-Man's secret identity revealed as Peter Parker, and then boom, Tom Holland's face shows up on the screen. <clears throat> like, I know that Tom Hardy has been wanting Tom Holland together, but that was just really fucking cool. But then, the really interesting part, I'm really happy about this. Venom takes over, and he gets close to the screen, and he says, that face, and he licks it, and motherfucker, that idea that Venom knows Peter Parker, maybe from an alternate universe, and maybe we're going to get the retcon, that that's where the eyes come from, and that we, that's that he's been part of Spider-Man before. That's not even talking about the fact that officially, as of that after credit scene, Venom is in the MCU. Now, like I said, even though there are those negatives and they seem like they would be game-breaking, they're not for me. This was in an entertaining movie. I liked the time I had with it. I tried not to get hung up on the small little things. Because if you go into this movie and you 
don't really have an idea of what Cletus Cassidy can do and what Carnage can do or who Shriek is, you can have a really good time with this movie. This movie is fun. Woody Harrelson as Carnage, he gets it. He gets being Cletus Cassidy. And like I said before, I can watch Tom Hardy play Venom and Eddie Brock until the end of the MCU. If they want him in there, I'm in. I'm in to watch him be lethal protector, eating people, be a good guy, maybe finally be a bad guy. I will never be a bad guy. You're, you eat people. I need to. You eat people. You're a bad guy. I save them too. I know you save people, but you eat people. And yeah, that's not good guy stuff. That's for me. And Parker's probably going to kick your ass. And he's a kid. I know, but he's still probably going to kick your ass. Just get ready for it. Well, that's going to do it for me. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share it with friends, all the good stuff like that. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get ready for some more Halloween stuff, some child's play stuff, because that's on the horizon. I will see you when those videos come out. But until then, you take this one. Take care.